welcome to Creatives in Quarantine. I'm Tawana Floyd, your host. This week, I speak with actress, filmmaker, writer, producer, Patricia Mizen, who at the start of COVID flew to New York City to move her great aunt to Los Angeles for safety and still found time to be creative by completing her feature film. Her knack for recognizing good character and good story has led her to many film festivals. Here's Patricia. Hey, Patricia. Hey, Tawana. So good to see you. Good to see you, man. I was, um, I had a, a conversation with another one of our UCLA professional program, professional acting for the camera program graduates, yeah. Charlie Newell. And that's how you and I know each other as well from that eight month program. Yes, yes, UCLA, probably the best times of my life was through that program, yeah. and I, it, oh gosh, I miss it, actually. I do, too. I loved, I loved it, and Charlie is, I'm such a huge fan of his heart and his soul. He's yeah. such a great person. We stay in contact as well, still. You know, that's one thing that we talked about, is that most of us still stay in contact out of a class of 16 there were 32 because there were two separate classes and we would merge sometimes, but our class of 16, a yeah. bulk of us are still. Yes. Still touch and it's nice. Yes. And we're all staying creative. Some of them, not all. I shouldn't say all. No, you not know. all. Yeah. And, and it's okay if, if they're it's not. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. So good to see you. Thank you for having me on your show. Absolutely. <laughs> I know you as an actor. I also know that you are a, um, I know that you're heavily immersed in films and tend to go to festivals often, um, but I don't know what capacity. So how did you get to where you are now? Um, and then you can share any other creative outlets that you have as well that we may not know you for. Well, when you're talking about the independent film outlet, yeah. you know, how did I get in that? I just, I showed up and did the work. I did the audition. I booked the job and did the job, you know, did the work mm -hmm. creatively, brought what I needed to bring to the story. And lo and behold, uh, it got picked up and was accepted into different festivals, mm -hmm. you know, and then it, you know, you just, you don't say no, unless you, you know, your, your heart's not a hundred percent in it, or there's some discrepancy, yeah. Yeah. but work begets work. And I believe in that because the director, you know, is also trying to rise up and, and, and work his way or her way up. Mm -hmm. And when you collaborate with a great team and you do a great job and the story is wonderful, mm -hmm. who knows where it will lead. And that's basically what has happened. And which pro project are you speaking of specifically? I know that there's several, but um, you talk about showing up and doing the work, but then there's all the pre-stuff before you even get there. Like, what's your process to choosing to finding the projects? And then maybe you can name a couple of the projects as well. Absolutely. Uh, well, first, I, read, I get the invitation, right? You get the, inv the audition. Mm -hmm. um, Is that coming from your agent or your self-submission? Uh, the modified low budgets would be from my manager mostly and, um, the lower budget, you know, <laughs> would be uh, usually from myself, uh, self submissions. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, I believe in, it doesn't matter what the budget is to me as far as, as long as the story is really good. And I also do the research on the director, the producers mm -hmm. and so forth, because you never know, it could be another, I don't want to say Blair Witch, but <laughs> the project has right. exploded. Yeah. I mean, people love it. You never know in this business. Mm -hmm. So um, I said, yeah, I read the script. And if I believe it, if I feel the character really talking to me, then I just go for it. I do the audition. Creative, uh, creatively, when I, the process for me is um, really finding the heart and soul of the character and what is it that I'm trying to say? What are my obstacles? You know, uh, breathing life into her, basically from birth all the way, you know. Um, like using writing some sort of Bible or something or of, the, of her narrative or her bio or something. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, for me, the process is when I build a character, I, I do it from who are her parents? How was she raised? 
economic status, mm -hmm. um, what tragedies happened in her life, anything that compelled her to be um, psychologically messed up, perhaps, depending. I mean, you know, as, you know, looking in our own selves, in our own lives, there have Thing, there have been things that we have gone through that might have changed our lives. So when I'm building a character, I think through imagination, this is all made up if I don't have a, a backstory on the character. I just develop my own thoughts and narrative and um, tribulations that will help build layers to the character that may trigger some things that... Um, and then, you know, it, it helps because when you're listening to your scene partner and they may say something and it can trigger something that comes alive in you as, as the character that you didn't expect, but it's because you did the background work, you did the, the character work of, of that, that bloodline that can trigger something in a memory in your, and you get something out of it. It could be, an emo it's an emotional response and and to me that's the creative side of my imagination working and developing a character and so you spoke about um if the difference is because there's i think there's three tiers to um to independent films but you spoke uh, specifically about the modified budget and that comes through your manager was that a conversation that you had with that you have with your reps um prior to signing with them or at some point and just letting them know there's something specific that you're looking for or how does it work? Yes, yeah, so that's a really good question. They actually asked me in the beginning, um, uh, you know, what is the lowest rate pay that you would accept? Or, you know, will you accept low budget films? Mm -hmm. You know, where do you see yourself? How do you want us to submit you? Are you okay with that? So, I mean, I love my manager. He's wonderful. He's awesome. Yeah. Um, and so that opened the dialogue, but I think it is important for the actor to also bring that up if the manager doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I just said, yeah, I can do, I can do low budget, but modified absolutely is where, you know, uh, is the top of my game right now at this point in my career. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's been something that's been um, forthcoming. Um, but I want to, I want to, I want to add um, the film that, has gone to cans in ah. fact this year was something that came out of the blue it was through a friend and he said he hit me up he's like hey we're looking for this character this wife and you know what you would be great i just see you right and i'm like all right so what's up where do i need to, what do i need to do send me the script mm -hmm. and he sent it to me i'm like okay yeah definitely yeah do you wanna hmm? there was no pay in that there was no pay but i didn't like care <laughs> i didn't care yeah. it was about the story yeah. and the truth right and it touching people's lives and boom lo and behold it made it to cans yeah here. and i'm very proud of it you know and i'm proud of the team and i'm just very humbled to be a part of it right I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I spoke with another actress the other day also who was just recently, well, yeah, 2019 was Emmy nominated for um, a, a really great web series that she got the call from a friend because another actress dropped out and said, hey, can you participate in this? And just based on, you know, his reputation and then for, for her and then her reputation for him, she said yes. And then, you know, how, how much, I don't know how much time had, had passed in between, you know, that and, but then wound up a lot of those people, I think they're at 12 Emmy nominations. Wow. So yeah, it's about building relationships it and, and um, following story and things that you're interested Absolutely. in. Absolutely. And you know what? The money will come when money it comes. comes. It's yeah. about doing the work mm -hmm. and work begets work and we're storytellers. So why wouldn't we accept a job to tell a story? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Truly believe in it. So Yes. Yeah. yes. And, and within still with some, some preferences to to what that is because we don't say yes to everything but yes. that's true that's um, true so how did you get to to where you are now as an actress did you did you know you always wanted to be an actress did uh i did you know well i was always loving the i had no fear when i was a kid basically mm -hmm. 
I would could get up on a beach on a beach on a, a bench and just stand up and just make my own songs and dance and I didn't care I had no fear as far as embarrassing myself you know? <laughs> <laughs> um high school was doing some plays you know dabbling into it um did the forensics you know where it's the uh, you pop in and out of character and I wish I'd had done a little bit more of that, but I didn't even know about it until the end of like my senior year, mm -hmm. but I loved it. And um, I won my first competition doing a dramatic interpretation of Morning Becomes Electra by Eugene O'Neill. Oh, that's great. And, right? So when you actually like win an award for something that you could possibly potentially be good at, but didn't really believe 100% in myself, and then when you win something, oh my gosh, yeah, this can actually happen. But so um, went to college, went to uh, university and uh, where did you go? Methodist College, actually. Mm -hmm. And where is that? Fayetteville, North Carolina. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my dad was in the military, military brat. So yeah. that's where, you know, I was raised here and there, but traveled around because he was military. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I did a play with, I was, um, actually, it was Cat on the Hot Tin Roof and it was part of our like thesis, our final mm -hmm. and did a scene from there. And my acting teachers wrote on the sheet on the evaluation, you should think about going, you could go professional. That's what she said. And I thought, oh my gosh, Wow somebody also sees something potential, like something inside of me that, wow, you know, it just changes your whole perception and it gives you confidence because I didn't have a lot of that when I was a kid, you know, um, as far as someone praising and say, you're doing such a great job. You know, you, you have this talent or I didn't have that, you know, so I had to kind of find it. And then when I heard it through someone else's eyes, it gave me a little bit of confidence and I was yeah. like, wow, okay. Yeah. Put that thought into my brain. Mm -hmm. It was, so it's like the validation, a validation. Of, of those teachers, but then also the reinforcement as a, as a young child receiving an award, like yeah. you're, you're collecting these, um, these merit badges, if you will. Yeah. I hope you start to realize, yeah. I can do this. Mm -hmm. And um, my aunt was a, well, she was a singer and she lived in New York and she was doing her thing, but she was much older, you know, and then now she was teaching at this point. Mm -hmm. And I told her, I'm like, you know what? I want to, I want to go, I want to do this professionally. What do I need to do? Like, I want to, I want to do this. I want to be an actor on Broadway and this and yeah. that and the other. She goes, uh -huh. You need to go to class. <laughs> you need to get some education first and um, so that's when I enrolled into the uh, Actors Institute in Boston because I was there at that time oh so, wow two mm -hmm. years with Meisner yeah I didn't know that I didn't know that part yeah. of you oh that's yeah. great thanks to her and so then you left Bo why did you choose Boston uh, I was we were stationed there oh gotcha you did say that so yeah. you went from Boston and then did you come to LA after that or was there some other stops along the way well, there was a stop. So what happened was um, I did the two years set, and then I sent out a stack of headshots to a bunch of agents in New York. Okay. I was going to go do the whole New York thing. I already had a place to stay. I was like, ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a couple calls and I had meetings and I was driving and this and that and the other. And um, got a phone call that my dad had surgery, lung surgery. Oh. I said, okay, so I went to North Carolina and my whole life changed, like went upside down mm -hmm. at that point because he was, it went to his brain, he had oh, brain no. cancer, went down to his bladder. And it was eight months of just hell. So my journey took a turn mm -hmm. and um, I became his caretaker. And then I was helping my mother. And so then that happened. That was about a year. And then came out to LA. Okay. Was he able to overcome the illnesses? Um, he did have some quality of life here and there, but towards the end when cancer takes a hold yeah. of the majority of your body, it's 
it's yeah. not pretty. No, I understand. I'm sorry to hear that. I didn't know that either. Yeah. Um, yeah and you know, that's another thing I, I think maybe that's not really discussed often is um, not leaving your dream, but taking a break to whether it's helping family, um, yeah. who knows, a, a host of reasons could come up for us to depart what we're doing, but always coming back on track. So yeah. I think that part is what I'm mostly interested in because it's not easy to get back on track when you've been away from it for so long. So how sure. did you manage to still hold up the, uh, the gumption and, and yeah. get back to it? It is like starting all over again, you know, but I didn't let that narrative hold me back, you know, the negative side of, oh gosh, I got to start all over and, yeah. you know, I got to build. It's like, yes, it's there, but you got to block that negative narrative and just go for it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you just dive right in, you get on Actors Access, you work on your reels, you do all those things that you, as a, your own business, you do. You set up the foundation, get in class, um, stay connected. And that's what I did. Um, you know, and then one thing le leads to another. I got an agent, you know, got the manager and started auditioning. And you So know, you did this from North Carolina or this is? No, I was in LA now. This oh, is gotcha. Okay. So what, what, what gave you the impetus to move to LA, such a big city, especially when you had your site set on New York at one point? So I uh, met my husband, actually. Oh. <laughs> yes. Oh. yes, 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 yes. So we moved out um, to LA. This is my second time being in LA. So okay. the first time was for like three years. And that's after my dad passed, you know, I came out and, um, man, I just thought, okay, this is it. I'm going to, you know, I'm on full speed. Yeah. I mean, I was in a zone, but the thing is there was an end to my journey that I didn't want to end because, um, he was in the military and your stations are three years. And so it was like, no, but I don't want to leave. I can't leave. Yeah. And I had a daughter at the time too, as well, only mm -hmm. three years old. Yeah. And I started getting jobs and getting the momentum, got the agent, you know, I didn't have a manager, mm -hmm. got into the union, you know, I was working my way up and it was like, it's time to go. What do you mean it's time to go? I'm not going anywhere, <laughs> you know, but it's <laughs> Please go without me. I'll be right here. <laughs> Right. So, um, it was like, I kept the, I kept the agent and he was going to Alabama for school. And I was like, all right, I'll go to Alabama, but if I get an audition, I'm flying back and this and that and the other. And I, I was teaching as a personal trainer at this time. We moved, we ended up moving. And I thought to myself, you know what? Hollywood will always be here. Yes. It will always be here. It's, yeah. It's never going anywhere. Right. Right. Yeah. So second time, boom, had to leave and stop pursuing because the first time was New York. Yeah. Now the second time, boom, had to leave again, had, have to go. Mm -hmm. Went to Alabama, was there for a year. My agent still was sending me out and I got uh, an audition for um, Passions, which is a soap opera. And I flew out. My brother lived here. I stayed with him. I did background work to make up the cost of whatever I needed. And I also had a job in, Gold, in um, Alabama as a personal trainer. So I was able to afford flying back and forth. Mm -hmm. And I ended up booking the job, oh, great. you know? Yeah. from not even living here. And I'm like, okay, I can do this. Mm -hmm. After a year, it got to be a little bit, you know, hectic. And plus we were moving again. Mm -hmm. So we were moving further away. I'm assuming and at this time, uh, the Southeast region was not the booming market that it is today. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. And this was like in 2009, 2010 time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then um, I said, well, you know, it is what it is. My heart will always be in LA and hopefully I'll be back one day. Mm -hmm. But I've got, you know, I've got a daughter I'm taking care of and I'm going to, you know, and so 
but I never stopped working towards the craft. That's the thing. I always found a community. I found, it didn't matter, on stage community theater, mm -hmm. found some writers to dabble in with, or even just put in, get, I was in their shorts or whatever they were doing. Um, and through lots of prayers, <laughs> and um, of course my husband knew where my heart was because I was gonna come back to LA with or without him. At some point, right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. Um, he made it happen and he said, guess what? We're going back to LA and you could finish your dream and do what you got to do. That's wonderful um, to have that support in your partner. Absolutely. And so I'm here to stay. We're not leaving He's <laughs> out of the military. <laughs> so it's like, I'm living the dream now yeah. and I'm very thankful and very grateful. I think it's wonderful. You know, that's something to really, um, to highlight is that no matter where you were, you still continue to immerse yourself in some form of community to keep the fire lit, to keep the, um, what do you call it, the iron stoked, and also to keep your, your craft sharp. And I think a lot of people don't recognize, they feel like they have to be here or one of the major markets, but it's like you can still make things happen in the meantime where you are until you can make it to the major markets. Absolutely. And uh, to piggyback on what you just said, there was a series that I was casted in, in in Baltimore because we were living in Northern Virginia at this time. Mm -hmm. And so we shot it in, in Baltimore. I was one of the series regulars for that whole first season. And it got picked up for Amazon Prime, you know, and now it's airing. Like, yes. And it was shot in 2014. What's the name <laughs> of it? We've got to see it. Oh, Pigeon the Series. Pigeon the series. I know the title is crazy, but it's like, who knew? And so all that work oh. and all that effort paid off. And yeah. here we are. I'm so glad that you share that because that's the whole thing. It's like, we never know what, like that's the second story that you shared. So the first one was the one that went to Cannes, the film that went to Cannes. And it's like, we do these things that we really enjoy doing and say yes to with no idea of where it's going to go, no, but I staying the course Stay in course. Yeah. Having faith, trusting, yeah. you know, completely. Um, yeah. I mean, 2014, who knew? Right. And it's like, oh, wow, we are? Oh, we're on. Okay. It's streaming. <laughs> it's like, you need to you know. watch it. You didn't tell us that. That's okay. We know now. <laughs> I know, right? There's a lot of things I don't say. I'm very quiet. I know. I know. It's okay. <laughs> You're reserved. It's fine. It's, it's probably better to be that way, quite honestly. Um, so, so now let's, let's go down the other path of you being a writer. And do you direct as well? Yes, I've dabbled into it. I've okay. directed. But definitely writing. And so how did that, that part of your creativity um, bloom and blossom? Wow. Uh, the first time I wrote something was in um, Northern Virginia before I came out to L.A. And... You know, it was just a burning passion inside of my soul that I wanted to tell this story about PTSD. It's mm. something that I went through when I was a child. I think you knew this from my dad being in the military. He was very strict and I lived a very regimented life. Like it was, I couldn't date. I, yeah. My phone calls were timed. Yeah. Um, you know, it was very tough on me as a kid. And, but there weren't any, you know, PTSD. PTSD at that time wasn't really talked about, you know? So it was just- In terms from childhood, usually PTSD is talked about like, like tra traumas in terms of war or yeah. like real hard physical abuse or something like that, but never from an internal psychological point. Right. Growing up with trauma, yeah. So I believe my father had some PTSD, you know, and so, and then also with my husband being in the military, going to war, he, I believe, also had PTSD too at some point, you know, there is recovery, you know, mm -hmm. um, it was just something that I wanted to share. And so I, I wrote it. I mean, it just came out and then I was like sharing my story with, um, I was doing background in DC, in DC, and I was sharing my story. And this gentleman, Rick Kane, he goes, I'll shoot it. I'm like, huh? He goes, yeah, I'll shoot it. You want to make it? Let's do it. I'm like, really? And then I had someone else say, yeah, let's do it. My friend Manuel, he was like, we can use, you can use my house. 
And so it was just like, wow, the embrace of other collab, you know, they wanted to collab and work and just share and do the story. And I was like, thank you so much. And we made it, you know, and it actually got into a film festival. That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> it got into a film festival um, in DC and it was aired and shown. And I was like, all right, my first experimental down, got it in the bag, you know? And then, so that was that. What was the name of it? Blink. Sorry? Blink. 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 Yeah. Blink. Gotcha. Yeah. And you know, that's incredible too, because that's a testament to who you are. Although I say that you're reserved, but one of the things about you is that you are, you're very open and a lovely person. So I can imagine you sharing this story and it probably hitting somebody's heart and then saying, oh, but this is Patricia. I would love to do this for her. Do you, did, did you recognize that it's because of who you are, that people were so open to making it happen? Who I am? Mm, at the time, no, <laughs> no, thank you so much. No, I just thought, wow, they, you know, you know, I was just very lucky and very, um, just being at the right place at the right time. There's and that, but there's also a testament to who you are as a person. Thank you. The you energy just showing up to say, You're right. yeah. Right. You're absolutely right. My energy, yeah. me, you know, it's um, the energy propelling that and, you know, what you feel and the, the energy that you give off will attract those like-minded people as well. Mm -hmm. And they will come into your life and make things happen. And I know, so mm -hmm. yeah, at that time I did not know that, but now I do through right. a spiritual journey that I'm at now, but mm -hmm. And going, and to answer your second, or the other question, the second one that I wrote, um, it's called Fly Right, and that was in 2018. Okay. And it actually won an award. I'm very proud of. That's right. <laughs> because in my head, my experience of you, let's see, when did we do UCLA? Was that 2017, I believe? 2017, yeah. Yeah, my experience of you is that you're always immersed in some form of filmmaking as a producer, writer, actor, and also making sure that it at least gets into some form of a film festival, whether mm. it gets accepted or not. So what do you think it is about you that, um, aside from being very regimented, growing up structured, the psychology that makes you say uh, that this should go further, this should go into a film festival or, you know, what it is that you say yes to? Um, well, you know, no, don't get me wrong. There have been film festivals that I was not accepted into. I'm sure. Yeah. You know, right. but you know, you just have to but keep you still try. Always, yeah. always try. What do we have to lose? What do you have to lose? Mm -hmm. And I feel like only yourself, myself, can inhibit further progress. Mm -hmm. You know, we as, as humans, we can do whatever we want. Like, you know, we have the ability to make our dreams come true. I, I totally believe that. And I believe that it is oneself that can hold us back. Mm -hmm. You know, um, fear. We talked about fear before. And it's like, what do you have to lose? You just go for it. You know, you go for it. You try to surround yourself with positive, like-minded people that also believe in the same thing that you believe as far as collaborating and storytelling and making the project right, mm -hmm. you know, and um, discerning, discerning those people that want to bring you down and hold you back and tear you apart. Mm -hmm. You know, I was uh, with a manager a while back who was horrible for me. And I didn't see that in the beginning because I was blind to it, and because of my childhood, growing up in a very, you know, like, I love my father, God bless him, you know, but he was very strict and regimented, so you get used to that, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So I thought it was normal, but it was not normal, and I started spiral, spiraling into this rabbit hole of, I'm not good enough, 
I, you know, comparing myself to other people, bringing myself down, and it was tearing me apart. So I had to do some serious soul searching, and within the past uh, couple of years, you know, it's helped me because I realized that we are the only ones that can truly hold ourselves back, mm -hmm. you know, as far as mentally. And um, it's freedom when you can know that there's nothing I can't do. If they can do it, if she can do it, he can do it. Why can't I? I can do that. Mm -hmm. You just put the work in. You've got to put the work in. What do you think the breaking point was with that manager? What was the aha moment, the realization, the, the veil being removed from your eyes where you saw clearly that this was not a match? When he, when he totally said, you don't have any credits. It's like, what? I don't have any credits. What are you talking about? I've been working so hard. What do you mean? My list, my resume, it doesn't mean anything. It means a lot to me. So he degraded and he minimized hmm. basically what I've been working so hard to do to get to a certain point. Right. And that was the breaking point. And I thought, he doesn't believe in me. Why am I? That's it. Yeah. He doesn't believe in me. Right. Why am I wasting my time oh. going back and forth? Because he manipu it's manipulation. And there are some really bad people out there in the world, which we know, you know, they want to manipulate you and control the way you think. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, you can't go anywhere. You can't do anything. You're not going to get anywhere without me. Whoa, whoa. That's, yeah. you know, that's an old, that's an old guard. That's the dinosaur way of doing things. And we're not in that day anymore. Was he an older <laughs> gentleman? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Middle age, you know, but, uh, yeah, yeah. but I had to learn self-love. Right. I had to learn self-respect mm -hmm. and I had to learn um, that the, the strength and power is within myself and not on, not anybody, not, nobody, no other human yeah. is going to give me the power that I need right. to succeed. Yes. And he wanted to take my power from me. Mm -hmm. So. Now that's a great contrast because earlier we were talking about how you got the, the reward in grade school and that was validation. And then you had these judges at school tell you that you should go on, go on. And then now here it is, however many years later, where you recognize, I don't need that anymore. No. I'm self-sufficient within myself. Exactly. Exactly. And, and then it, you know, that was enough that was an, uh, one layer and so the second layer that i'm at now here in my life mm -hmm. is yes you can win all the awards you want to and you know you have celebrities that win all these awards but they're so unhappy mm -hmm. you know and suicide is right around the corner for some of these people who have everything you know and they get into drugs so it's like for me it's finding joy in the present moment you know right. joy yeah and um that's a huge for me win you know and when you can do that and find joy and it, it really changes the game yeah because i'm not so crazy about oh my god okay i went on this audition and it's for a big network show and i'm not hung up on the result you know, mm -hmm. it's like, oh my gosh, I have this opportunity to develop this character. Holy cow, this is going to be so much fun. Mm -hmm. Do the work, send it in, and let it go. Right, right. And I believe that every one of us in this industry, there is a role for us. It's waiting there for us. No matter when it's going to be, it will happen. And we just have to be patient. We have to do the work. We have to go through the steps and we have to learn things on the way yes. and everything will line up and yes. we will, we will get what we, we desire, right. what we want. Trust and enjoy the journey because that's where yeah. all the treasures lie. Absolutely. Um, so <laughs> in quarantine, um, yep. how are you staying creative? If so in quarantine, I am staying creative, of course. Um, 
I finished my feature film, yay. Yeah. It took a year and a half to write. Mm -hmm. I also co-wrote a pilot, we finished that. And so that's done. And um, what else? When you say we, do you have a, a, a writing partner? Yes, the pilot, I have a writing partner, a good friend. I've known her for about five years now, actually. Okay. And um, we work very well together and we finished it up finally. And um, when things open up, we'll pitch it to network, mm -hmm. you know, but yeah, staying creative. I have different ideas popping up in my mind here and there and it's like, okay, you know, but uh, watching old movies, documentaries, mm -hmm. I love watching about uh, watching old documentaries like Sinatra's the, the latest one that I'm working on, on Netflix, you know, and his life. Um, yeah. Doing some self-help stuff. And you said you, um, that you're definitely staying creative um, during quarantine. Did it start out like, did, did you maintain creativity from the inception of the quarantine or did like it ebb and flow and then you found it along the way? Gosh, wow. So um, March 17th, I remember the exact day mm -hmm. when, you know, it was announced that we are under a national emergency. Yeah. So it was like, holy cow. And, um, I didn't, I didn't, I was like, I don't know. I just, the first thing I did was I'm going to run. I'm just going to run. So I just did this whole run challenge and I did, I did a post or something and I was just like, I'm doing this challenge and you want to join me, join me. I'm going to run every single day. And that helped me release a lot of the anxiety of what's going to happen. Right. So I started doing that. And then my aunt, who I mentioned before in New York, she got the virus very early into the quarantine, actually March 25th, mm. okay? So then um, she lives alone. She ended up, I had to call the precinct. Thank God the cops went and checked on her to do a wellness check. Uh -huh. Found out that uh, she is not well because she stopped answering my calls for two days. And they called the ambulance and they said, she is not well. And I'm like, she has the virus. I know she has the virus, you know. And uh, she was admitted to the hospital. She had the virus. Absolutely. Is she a baby boomer? Is she older? Oh, yeah. She's 84. Oh, wow. Okay. Now. Yeah, oh, now. yeah. No wonder why you call the precinct. Ooh. Absolutely. Right. I was really scared for her. Wow. And there's no one like, you know, she's divorced. She lives alone. And so after she was hospitalized... Uh, they did the trial drug, um, and it helped her, and she got out of there, and they put her into a nursing home, like all that political stuff. I'm not going to get into, <laughs> you know, and yeah, so, but I had to make a decision, and it was, for me, a very easy decision. I had to fly, uh, you know, because I'm next to Ken. She has no one, and I'm like, well, I'm flying in. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go help my aunt. Yeah. So I geared up and flew into New York during the height of the pandemic, the epicenter, <laughs> and picked her up and took her to her apartment. And I'm like, okay, you're, you're home, you know, and I want to move you out. You're coming with me. You're moving to California. I hope Great. you know. <laughs> and she was like, what, what? Okay. You know, she's 84. Yeah. And, um, you know, at this time, there were those monologue challenges that were happening. Right. Yeah. So I was doing those. Okay. And there was a monologue where you could just make up your own monologue. And I actually made a monologue about my aunt and what I was going through. Mm -hmm. And it was just, that helped release a lot of also some anxiety, you know, whenever you're able to do anything within the arts to, you know, funnel all that the feelings into something else, into something creative. It's very therapeutic. Right. And so I did that and um, that was right before I flew in. And then I ended up getting the virus. Ah. It, it reactivated itself with her. They didn't test her. They didn't have, I guess, enough tests to test her during when she was in um, quarantine at the nursing home. Mm. Her immune system went down. Some remnants of the virus was still in her system. It mm -hmm. activated itself. She had a fever, cough, all those things. I was there. 
And she went back into the hospital, back into quarantine, away from me. Mm -hmm. After 14 days later, for me, I'm sitting here packing her stuff up. I'm working, you know. Mm -hmm. It was on Mother's Day. I woke up and I was sick. I felt like I was hit by a truck. I had no energy. All of those symptoms. Got tested the next day. Took six days for it to come back positive. And boom, I was having to quarantine and everything stopped. And I was alone. And your husband and your daughter here in LA because you were by yourself. Yeah. And I said, I don't, nobody, I don't want anyone flying in. You can't. I know. So. I had some things happen to me along that journey, um, you know, and wow, it's, it's really, um, it's a story, you know, and I, you know, maybe I'll write it and and write a story about what happened in the journey later, but um, things happened along the way that woke me in other, in other words, Mm -hmm. Um, but it was all good. And five weeks, I was testing. I was getting tested every week because I was ready to be oh, better. Yeah, to go. Yeah. Pick, she was negative at this point. I'm positive. I'm like, you gotta wait on me now. <laughs> so um, finally, after five weeks, I tested negative, and I arranged it to where I was able to pick her up in the uh, mm-hmm. rehab nursing home facility. Mm-hmm. And I already had her stuff packed. That's that was going to be my question. You had her stuff packed and ready to go. You getting up out of here? Getting up, get out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I was there during the riots, which they're still going on right now. It's just like, yeah. Ah. Yeah. but you know, mm-hmm. I'm thankful to be alive. Mm-hmm. But she's here Thank- now, so she's here with you. You're the only kin, and now you can keep a closer eye on her. And yeah, she has um, her own apartment here. She's doing okay. very well. That's fast. Yeah, she's, yeah, yeah, it was, everything came together. Everything came together. And, you know, I knew it would. Yeah. We have to keep that, that strength and positive thinking. Everything's going to work out. That's right. The universe is always working for our favor. Yeah. It's going to be fine. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. whatever's going to happen will happen, but we still have to be positive, right? That's just who I am. I'm just a very positive person. I don't mean to sound cliche, but you know, that's just who I am. That's who you are. That's who you are. Unapologetically you. Right. So you talked about, well, you have the, you have two projects working. You have the film, you have a pilot and we're just waiting now for a semblance of opening up the industry again. Um, Is there anything, and now we can watch Pigeon. Pigeon the series. On Amazon. Yeah, and Golden Boy is on Amazon as well, which is an independent film. Golden Boy. So we got Pigeon, we got Golden Boy, and then you've got the two projects that are coming. Is there anything else that you want to let us know about? Uh, well, CEO is another project that's on. There's other stuff that's on Amazon. But what do I want to let you know um, about what's going on? If you want to. If not, I think I think we got some good stuff. I think we covered it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, we're all in this together, you know, we're just making the, the most of it as, as, as far as this point is concerned. We're just mm-hmm. ready to open up and get back to our lives, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, so. Okay. Has there been anything that you've learned? Have you tried to pick up a new hobby or a new creative outlet that you've always wanted to try? Or has anything like that surfaced for you? Um, well, I have been, I'm going to say I have been get gearing into leading into some eating differently. Not um, into doing what? Differently? Like vegan. Vegan. <laughs> you know, some days are better than others, but I'm trying it. I'm open. So I'm open to, you know, different recipes. So cooking is something that I lo- I'm loving right now at this point. And, um, is there a favorite out- dish you've tried so far? Oh, tofu stir fry. I love. Great. And I made, um, I took some flaxseed and I grounded it, ground, grounded it up, mm-hmm. made it to a little powder. And then I mixed in some egg whites, some turmeric, Mm -hmm. and um some coconut water I think and I just kind of like made tortillas 
awesome. So healthy. So now I'm like turning into this super health nut, which I'm, which is great because I got to stay healthy. You know, I don't want to get sick again. <laughs> you're over that home I think <laughs> right I know now I got to give my plasma that's the next thing I see it's almost like you had to it's so funny you come from a military family your husband's military and then you had to go to the war zone <laughs> of COVID right. and right? Came back out and came back out you and, are and, but you know what hmm. Tawana and this is what where, where passion comes through comes from I never stopped doing what I loved because when I was sick and was positive with COVID, I finished my feature film. Oh, wow. You finished I, I at finished that time. At that time. When yeah. I was alone, you know, mm. I finished it. Mm -hmm. And I was still, I still was doing auditions. I remember one day I had a Zoom session with some, um, with the cast and crew on a series, Judgment Call, the series. We're on season two. Mm -hmm. and oh my gosh just sitting in the chair for like an hour I, I I had to lay down I was I was sick I still had COVID but I was still you know you you push through you fight you fight through it and you you don't let it take you under you know and so I just you just push through those obstacles that want to hold you down yeah. But I still was creative, talking about creative in quarantine, yeah. That's right, that's what we do, hopefully, yeah. and push through and stay resilient. That's right, yeah. that's right. And everything is going to work out. Everything will be fine. That's right. I believe that. I have a lot of hope. I have a lot of hope for America. <laughs> Thank you for watching Creators in Quarantine. I hope you learned a lot from Patricia. She's definitely a go-getter. And don't forget to watch her series, Pigeon, on Amazon. If you learned something new or like what you heard here, you should subscribe, share. See you next time. Bye.